Yes, shalom everybody, shalom TikTok and Facebook family. I welcome all of you in the name of the Lord. I'm excited to host you tonight. Uh, today is a teaching service, so I want you to invite somebody. Today we are talking about something very important, precious truth. I thank the Holy Spirit for this opportunity to share what has put upon my heart. So uh, any person that is failing in life and any person that is crying that things are not good, I've tried my best, call them. Tell them to join in because I'm about to share some things uh, that will change your life. So I want to give us four minutes. I want, to, I want us to take four minutes to tap the screen, TikTok, Facebook, invite somebody uh, so that um, you are blessed alongside somebody else. It's good sometimes to also allow other people to partake um, of the word of God, courtesy of your invitation. Uh, so... Um, I believe somebody is going to be blessed today. Uh, today's truth is mind-boggling. Myself, uh, I was very refreshed when the Spirit of God was planting these things uh, in my spirit. So uh, let us take four minutes, invite somebody, then we pick it up from there. Yes, we have three minutes to start, so TikTok, let's keep tapping, Facebook, share this live in your profile as we move on. Myself, I can't wait to hear from the Holy Ghost about what is about. Yes, we have two minutes, we have two minutes. I've seen Evans is both on TikTok and Facebook. Evans, how are you doing? You're appearing twice. We have one minute. God bless you, Evans. We have one minute and then we start. Here we go, here we go. Father, we thank you for this day. We welcome you, Father. Speak to us, guide us. We need your voice and guidance, Lord. Forgive us where we have broken your law and sinned against you, Father. Help us. Spirit of God, I pray for the guidance to the airwaves. May everything correspond to the support of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, Facebook um, and uh, TikTok, I welcome all of you in the name of the Lord. Today we are talking about strength to prevail, strength of power 
to prevail. When you talk about strength, I'm talking about power, I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about uh, what will move you ahead. Um, I'm a keen follower of um, astronomy, people who study the stars and people who go to the outer space to conduct some studies. I, I, I try to follow them because uh, it's interesting according to me. And I was just following up on how a rocket should leave the earth into the outer space and I discovered there are some forces that work against the, the rockets and these forces are um, the force of gravity so as long as these people um, they are under gravity they cannot leave the ground so they must devise means they must devise, devise means of beating gravity so that is the principle that works so what they must do is that uh, they must um, uh, uh, employ what you call escape velocity escape velocity is the speed that they should employ on a rocket so that it can beat gravity and go to the outer space so from that example we learn that as christians there's a strength and energy a speed that you must employ in your life for you to live where you are and go to the next dimension so strength to prevail in the world today we have things which are which prevail like you are born in a family things happen in a particular way in our lives things have been designed to flow in a particular way i'm telling you things are already in motion you are born and you found things in motion the way the politics of your nation go the way your family affairs are conducted your culture things are conducted so everything is already established but sometimes what has been established works against us sometimes things that have already been established can work against you so i call it prevailing spiritual condition it affects nations families it affects your own life if you just stay the way you are without doing any other spiritual activity things will remain the same until you exit the earth. So today, we want to learn how can you employ the strength to defeat the prevailing spiritual condition. We don't want the conditions to prevail. We want you to prevail above them. I call it status quo. Status quo is things happening the way they have been happening. History is repeating itself all over the place. Everybody's broken in the family. Everybody's crying in the family. Women are unmarried. Nobody's happy. Everybody's crying. The same cry. The same suffering. And some challenges affect regions. They affect some places. If you go to a region, you find that uh, there's crime in that region. If you go to another region, there's poverty in that region. In fact, in my nation, there's a place whereby it was documented that um, it, it registered the highest number of cancer cases. Most people from that region contact cancer. So in this world, if you look care carefully, you'll discover we have what we call a prevailing spiritual condition. Things want to continue happening. Events want to continue happening. But God has given us the strength to prevail. So all of us, you need to learn. For you to start to do well, it means that you have gathered enough strength to prevail and win against what is prevailing. That's our work. That's what we are doing. If you see anybody succeeding, doing well, it means they have gathered enough strength to prevail. They have the stamina. Uh, let me go to the scripture proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 proverbs 24 verse 10 it says if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small if you faint in the day of, of adversity your strength is small so one thing i'm learning proverbs 24 verse 10 proverbs 24 verse 10 what i'm learning today is that there is a day called the day of adversity the, the bible has acknowledged so it means that in every uh, uh, um, in your life, in the life of every believer or any other person, there's always a day called a day of adversity. 
Of course, God does not create that day. It is created by the devil. We have the Roman calendar, we have the Julian calendar, and also we have the demonic calendar. And the demonic calendar, the devil has created a system of days called day of adversity or days of adversity or seasons of adversity. Of course, when the Bible talks about a day, it can also mean month, it can mean years, it can mean seasons. There is a day called the day of adversity, whether you like it or not. There's a season the devil will come against you full blessing. The devil will come against your family, against your finances, against your marriage. There's a day. I think if you spoke to people, you have friends, they'll tell you that they have gone through very bad seasons that threatened their businesses, threatened their marriages threaten their well-being. Even some people have escaped death during the day of adversity. So just know in the life of a believer, there is a day called the day of adversity where the devil will begin to attack you from all areas. If you faint in the day of adversity, so what will rescue you, what will help you is strength. So if you faint in that day called the day of adversity, it means that your strength is small. So the Bible is telling us, the reason why we are defeated in our lives is because we don't have strength. God is not wicked. You just don't have the strength. So it means that the other thing you should understand as a believer, apart from just clapping hands and saying, I'm going to church, my church is called uh, redeemed, my church is called uh, glory of Jesus, uh, what you should understand is that you have been given the responsibility of gathering your own strength. So this strength does not come from anywhere, from Jesus Christ. That's why we need to grow in Him, grow in the grace. Be strengthened every day in the faith. Why am I saying this? Because of the day of adversity. Some of us, we, we, we were born in families and we found a season of adversity. A hard time. Families under judgment. You were born and found that your family is being judged over the things that were done by your forefathers. They were idolaters, they were idol worshippers. And by the, by the time you are coming forth, you found there's a judgment affecting men, judgment affecting women. Men don't do well, they don't prosper. When they're about to prosper, they die. When they're about to do well, something will happen and then they just become drunkards. I've seen it. I've seen these are people who are connected to me by blood. That family was very blessed. I saw great people and they had good jobs working in very prestigious organizations. No, I'm telling you. But we have something called alcoholism. They started to drink. They could go to work drunk. So most of them, they died prematurely. They lost jobs. And they were intelligent. People connected to me by blood, I'm telling you. Why did this happen? Because when their father was raising them, he taught them how to in fact, in their home, they were brewing alcohol. They were preparing alcohol in their home, so they set up an altar of alcohol, alcoholism. So everybody, imagine a father is drinking with the children. You're calling your children together. Instead of taking juice or tea or, or coffee, you're giving your children alcohol. That's how the father introduced to the, uh, the family to alcohol. And they set up an altar of alcoholism. So from that day, all those children became drunkards. they did not end well. Why? Because they found a prevailing spiritual condition called drunkenness, alcoholism. So nobody was strong enough to overcome the prevailing spiritual condition. So I suspect that some of you, you are caught up in a web called prevailing spiritual condition. Women in the family cannot get married. Even if you insist you want to get married, you won't stay there. After some time, you discover that, ah, that man is a monster. Everybody is saying that man is a monster. So every lady in that lineage on that family is blaming some man uh, for not being responsible. But you discover it's not the man, it's the prevailing spiritual condition affecting uh, women in that family. You cannot stay in one marriage, you want to remarry so many times. But the Bible is telling us, the man is not bad, it is the prevailing spiritual condition. And that is called the day of adversity, the season of adversity. You are born 
in a time whereby marriages were not working, finances were not working. So there is a, an atmosphere, a condition around your life. For you to break through, you must gather strength, and that's what we are. Well, that's why we are here. I teach us how to gather strength in the day of adversity, so that you can penetrate and overcome the gravity of the challenges around your life. So I've mentioned that we have evil days and evil calendars. So you must work hard to, uh, to, to, to break through, to change and rewrite history in your family. Let me read another scripture that will uh, highlight what I'm talking to you about. I'll read Psalms 30, 32 verse 6. Psalms 32 verse 6. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray, shall pray to you in a time when you can be found. Psalms 32 verse 6. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. When I was reading this scripture, I was perplexed because the Bible is telling us when he can be found. So sometimes God can hide. That's why I, I, I could see David and other writers saying, Where are you, God? You've hidden yourself. It means that God can hide from this scripture. For this cause, everyone who is godly should pray to you in a time when you may be found. So, this is called grace. Grace means that you can find God. You can pray and find God. You can seek God and find God. You can seek answers and find God. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I shall show you mighty things, great and mighty things. If God has given an opportunity, you have a good pastor. You are in church. You have very strong people around you to fellowship with you. It's an advantage. For this cause, everyone who is godly should pray to you in a time when you will be found. Surely, in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. This, this is another verse, apart from what you read, Proverbs. Acknowledging there is the day that God can be found. That is a season whereby God has given an opportunity to attend church, to access a man of God, to access pastors, to access prophets, to access apostles. It means that that day God can be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. So there is a time of great waters, a time of challenges. So how you prepare in that season where God can be found will tell a lot whether you can survive. Great water, great waters, challenges. You're almost drowning in challenges. You're drowning in debt. You're drowning in sickness. It means the great waters. They shall not come near him. So some people think that what they're going through in their families cannot change because they have tried. But I want to tell you, you need to gather enough strength. That's why some people have prayed consistently for 15 years. That's when they saw a breakthrough. I saw people praying for 20 years. So I don't think it's good for us to give up early. People think that you'll just do micro, micro pray prayers. The way you go to the micro with a, uh, with, a, with a piece of bread. You just put some few seconds and then it works. When it comes to prayer, the reason why things are not happening is because your prayer bag is not full. The prayers you make for your family, you make for yourself, you make for your sisters, your brothers, must accumulate. And when it will hit a dimension in the spirit, the strength will be available for you to go and move. So if you pray and nothing is happening, it is not true. God is not a liar. God says, when you pray, I'll answer. When you pray, I listen, especially to believers. Your prayers are not being ignored. No, 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 no. The challenges, the prevailing spiritual conditions, the wickedness in your family has some level of, of strength, some level of capacity. So for you to be able to defeat it, you must gather equivalent strength. Yeah. You, must, you must outweigh the wickedness. You must outweigh the sacrifices. You must out outweigh the others in your family for you to begin to now succeed. That's why God is depending on you to set up an altar of prayer. 
God is depending on you to be committed. God is depending on you to embrace a lifestyle of prayer and sacrifice so that you can gather the strength that all of us need. In fact, I remember I'm not talking about the tap. I mean, only one person. If one person can rise up and begin to carry the burden of the family, the burden of your life, you'll begin to notice that after some time, you'll begin to count some breakthroughs, to count some blessings. If you don't gather the strength that you need to gather, that's where people begin to succumb to generational curses. You begin to die like your grandfather. You begin to cry on the pillow like your mother. The same frustrations that were following your people, they begin to follow you. It's because you don't have what it takes to rewrite history. You don't have the anointing to clear the bushes. Some of you, God has called you to be a pioneer in your family, to pave the way, to create a new path, but you are lazy. You don't want to wake up and pray during the night. But you can watch Netflix during the night. You can watch Disney+. Plus. I've seen so many pay television. You can do series for hours, but you cannot even pray for one hour. But you're telling God, change my situation. Uh, I want to tell you today, God is also depending on you to change the situation. Some of us are looking at God as though he has denied them something. That God is holding your blessing. God is sitting on your blessing. That's a wrong mentality. God does not owe you anything because he has already given everything you need through Jesus Christ. Some people think that God is owing them something and God must pay. I want to tell you all that you need in life has been granted through the son, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, purchased an inheritance for you. That's the thing. However, for you to be able to walk in the blessing, you need the equivalent power. There's no way you can go and start living in a 250,000 rental house without the economical power. There are so many powers in the world. We have economical power. We have spiritual power. Even in marriage, there is a power you need. Men, there is a, if you're married here and you're a man, there is a, a particular power. If you lack it, your marriage will collapse. If you're married here, there is a power you need. Sexual energy. You need power of love. If you lack those things, when your marriage will collapse. Even the devil has gone ahead to frustrate some men. Whenever it comes to their marriage, they cannot perform anything because they lack that particular power. Yeah. So many things happen. There are, there are a lot of powers that you'll discover you need. So, you should gather strength to change and prevail. That's the thing. Another example, the aeroplane. Um, uh, for you, you who have used the air transport, the moment you board a plane, before it takes, it takes off, it must gather a lot of momentum and energy on the runway. There's a speed they hit and then after some time you find yourself off the ground, you are being lifted in the air. Without that strength, then that plane cannot go anywhere. It must fight friction, it must fight resistance for you to go up. I think most of us are there. We don't have the energy to rise. We don't have the power to go over the ground. And we are blaming God. I want to tell you today, God is not the one to be blamed. There's, no, there's something you're not doing. There is something you're not doing well. Your prayer banks are empty. Remember, for you to do anything physically in life, you must draw from the power bank. There's a time I was praying for my family for some things. I was not happy the way things were happening. Those are many years ago. Eight years ago. I was praying and telling God, I want to see this. I want to see this. During that time, it was not happening. But I saw it happen. I saw God answer prayers. Why? We want immediate answers. We want immediate gratification. But we don't want to sit down to toil, uh, to tarry and gather the necessary energy. People want quick things, quick stuff. And that's where most of us are going to witch doctors. We're going to uh, diviners. They like to ask that this thing will work in seven days. This thing will work in 14 days. This thing will work in two days. It does not happen that way. You must invest in prayer. You must invest in the word of God. You must sacrifice. If you are a believer and you believe that things will come easy, easily your way, then there's a very big lie. 
remember things that Paul spoke about sacrifice Paul spoke about the cross you must carry the cross Paul spoke about suffering that things you must go through there's an energy that is required of you to gather for you to begin to shift things even some things that you believe in God will do for you you let her discover that God gave you the resources to do it God will tell you to do it God speaks to prophet Ezekiel telling Ezekiel prophesy to the bones I will, I, I'm, I'm a keen reader of the prophetic books and I discovered for God to do anything he depended on prophets to declare and prophet Ezekiel prophesied to the bones and he says I was prophesied, I prophesied as, as I was commanded and as he spoke things happened So some of you God is going to allow you to gather the strength and to prophesy to the bones of your family. The bones in your life things are not working. So you've been thinking that God will send angels to come and do it. No, 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 no. God will ask you to rise up, ask you to gather strength and then he'll tell you that prophesy to your own life. Some of you your solution is upon your tongue. You'll rise and speak to that thing to God, but you must first of all gather the strength. You must be in the wilderness. You must learn fasting. You must learn something new. Recently I did a fast that I, I don't do normally. I did a fast that I don't do normally and I discovered I've, I've been doing fasting my own way. I tried to stretch myself and I discovered one thing happened. When I was doing this fasting, the appetite to watch TV escaped. I did not want to see any TV. When I was doing this fasting, I discovered that even my thoughts are were controlled. I could not allow my thoughts to be all over the place. My thoughts were restricted. Then I discovered there's a place I'm missing because I don't fast the way I'm supposed to fast. It's like I entered another realm. And my spirit started to reject things that don't add value to my to my spirituality. I discovered that my spirit was rejecting anything that is not godly. anything that is not of god I, it, it was not a struggle it was no longer a struggle i found strength to say no 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 i cannot allow me I, i cannot explain to you i cannot explain to you but something was happening i could see myself walk freely into the things of god without struggle the flesh was weak then i discovered sometimes we fast the way we want we don't ask god how far can i go in fasting how fast can i go Then I discovered there's another life that is available for me but I'm just living down here. I'm allowing the flesh to to lead me. I'm allowing the flesh to deny me of what God has asked for me. The riches in Christ. God has there's a particular life that is available for you but you don't know. I'm telling you brothers and sisters. There is a level of life or spiritual life that if you begin to access it. I had another man of God say that he, fasted for some days was it seven days or 14 days and when he fasted he started to have pity on people because of where he had access to he was looking at people and say ah these people are living a different kind of life because himself he entered another, another realm of possibilities and he saw how things were moving i live where by just command and things happen you wish something and then it happens You desire something is brought to you. These things happen during moments of gathering power. And I remember there's a time I used to work uh, in a particular place in a particular bank and um, I noticed that each time I wanted an approval from that manager he was very hostile. He did not want to give me approval. Each time I, I was presenting a budget to do my works that manager was very hard, reluctant. was pushing me away but the day i decided to fast i the first day i went to him with the budget he did not even ask me any question he approved it then i discovered i've been living a fake life i was not engaging the powers available for me i was not engaging the strength that i need to engage so some of us i'm sorry there's an energy there's a power that is available for you but we are not tapping into it that's why 90% of the frustration you are facing a manment is your own mistake is your own ignorance some people are fighting you some things that are not happening 
I can blame you. Partly I can blame you because you don't know how you could have done it better. The witchcraft that is working against you, working against your finances, I blame you partly. If you knew the secret of engaging power, then things will turn out to be different. You're doing things the way you want. You're praying the way you want. You're fasting the way you want. You're giving the way you don't want to be told. But there's a standard in the kingdom. If you think in the world, I, I have worked in the banking sector and I saw a lot of standards. The, this, the way they do things. And in every sector, there's a standard of doing things. You cannot just come and say, hey, I want to rewrite the rules. I want to do things the way I want. They'll tell you, no. Imagine those are the people of the world, but they have a standard. They can mesh and weigh the, the actions of men. And they can tell you, don't, uh, we don't think we can hire you. Even interviews. You can have all the degrees you want, even masters, but you'll sit before a panel, they'll ask you some questions, and then say, mm, we are not confident that um, we can work with you. Have you ever... There's a time I was being interviewed in a particular bank and uh, I went through the entire process. I went uh, through two, in two interviews and then I met the CEO. I thought now, uh, because I was told, when it comes to the CEO, uh, it's just a matter of formality. You have already been taken. Uh, it's just a matter of asking questions. When I met the CEO, I thought it went well. I did not see any bad sign. But when I left, I was not picked. And I was told the CEO said, that he was not confident uh, that I could be part of their team. Imagine. And the way I had really pushed myself so hard uh, to begin to explain things there, to express myself. Anything that I knew, I thought I expressed myself, but he said no. So in the world, they have standards. You might think you are the best, but they have a quality and they have um, how they do things. So in the kingdom, if in the corporate world, in your company, organization they have standards and rules they have protocol they have policy so it makes you think that if you come to the kingdom of God you just freestyle people like to call it freestyle you just wake up and do things the way you want and nobody should question you nobody should talk to you about anything it's a lie that's why we fail I believe God has a prescribed way of doing things from how you should pray, how long you should pray, how many chapters of the Bible you should read per day, how much you should be giving according to your level. People give, let me tell you, a giving that makes sense is a giving that is equivalent to your income, to your resources. Which means, if two people came and they, they gave, let me say, a thousand dollars, they have given equivalent, but if you look at their abilities, you discover that some has an ability of doing even 20 million, but he's still, still doing a thousand dollars. That's an example. You remember that widow who came and gave a coin in the temple. Everybody was giving huge amounts, but Jesus said, That woman who has given the least has given the most. Why? He gave out of nothingness. So, some of us, we are trying to come up with our own styles, our own method of doing things. That's why you don't have strength from prayer, from fasting. Some of us, you need to be fasting weekly, monthly. But you have decided that you'll do it your own way. You need to be praying the way God has told you. God is asking some people to wake up at midnight. You wake, you're praying during the day when things have already transacted. As a spiritual person, you must learn to pray during the night. Well, you can, okay, you can pray any time. You can pray any time. But those who walk with God, they, they have discovered that they are called to pray in a particular hour during the night. That's when you discover prayer is also a calling. You cannot just decide. To... Have you ever been, okay, you are sleeping and then you discover your, your sleep has gone away. You are no longer sleeping. You just wake up from nowhere. You are sleeping well, but you discover that a particular hour, maybe 3 a.m., maybe midnight, you can no longer sleep. What does it mean? It means that the heaven is calling you for prayer. That's an alarm for you to pray. But some will wake up and go to the phone. You begin to chat with the people during the night. You begin to tell your friends, ah, you're, not asleep. you're not sleeping. But God was calling you to pray. So we don't have standards. You're wasting away your time. If you could have done three hours, if you could have done one hour during that time, then you could gather enough strength to 
uh, to, to buy favor, to buy breakthrough, by sacrifice. So spiritual power is costly. You must bear some cost. You must sacrifice. The reason why today's church people are very weak is because they have forgotten about the cross. They have forgotten the scripture that says, if one should follow me, they must carry the cross and follow me. They must carry the cross and follow me. So people don't know how to carry their cross. Everybody has their own cross, so we don't have the same cross. There are some situations which God has allowed us to go through. There are some demands. Heaven is demanding something from you, but we don't want. Heaven is demanding your time. Heaven is demanding your resources. Heaven is demanding something from you, but you, people don't want to release it. Some of us have been called to be the sacrifice for your family to do well. I don't mean that you should die for your family to prevail, no. You should submit your life entirely to Jesus by commitment, by prayer, by holiness, by righteousness, by purity. And through you, God will, should bring a deliverance to your family. But nobody wants that. People are escaping the altar. You are the sacrifice, yes. You are the chosen one. The tears you should cry, the prayers you should make, should make everybody in your family free. But nobody wants to take that role. It is painful. It's hard. And I can bear witness, the things of God are not easy. If you are a believer and things are very smooth, there's no way you're paying any price. Uh, uh, bread and butter, there's no, there, there, there must be a pain that works for the good. Like waking up during the night to pray is painful. Praying for hours is not good. Sometimes I feel like I have a back, backache because of many hours of sitting and praying. Because if I don't pray, something will be, will be amiss somewhere. If I don't pray, I'll end up like any other person who failed in the family. If I don't pray, I'll die the, the same way they died. I'll, I'll cry the same way they cried. I'll be a victim, not a, a, a victim. So I must put in the hours. I must put in the hours to study the word of God. Particular chapters. Because I know if I don't do this thing, I'll remain in the same plane, the same level. So you must gather equivalent strength for you to enter another realm. So what are you doing today to gather strength? What are you doing to gather strength? So the strength, somebody's asking, where, 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 where does it come from? Where does power come from? Where does the energy come from? What is this man talking about? Yes, I'm talking about the strength to prevail. The other thing, the strength comes from your worship. The strength that I'm talking about comes from your worship towards God in heaven. Any, any form of worship that God has prescribed in the scripture will release an equivalent strength. There's a strength that comes through giving. You cannot replace it with a prayer or any other thing. You must give according to what God is asking you to do for you to get that economical power, economical prevailing. Yeah. So this is a strength that comes from you sacrificing material things to God. That one you cannot replace. Some people are trying to replace it with something else. You are trying to play God. You cannot play God. There's a level of sacrifice you need to do financially for you to do well. And that strength will work for you, not any other person. So long as that giving has been done the correct way, it has been done towards God in heaven. For God on his altars. There is a strength that only fasting can avail. You might be praying for hours, many hours, but if you don't include fasting, then you discover you're missing something. I've just explained to you my experience. I tried a fasting that I don't do normally, and I noticed that I was living in another realm. My thoughts were controlled. It was easy for me to do the right thing. You know, some of us are struggling to do that. Before you do the right thing, you're upsetted. Hey! Just to do the, what you need to do, you are employing a lot of strength. To say no to sin, 
to say no to that man, to say no to that woman, you must really rehearse. Some of us are rehearsing the mirror, saying that when I go to him, I'll tell him, no, this is the last day. I shall, not, I shall no longer do this thing again. Uh, you, you must rehearse. You must really prepare psychologically uh, for you to at least face that person and tell them, no, it's because you don't have strength. You don't need to rehearse. There's a level of fasting and prayer. Sin will look at you and say, not today. Sin itself, that's when you discover sin is a, is a, is a spirit. Sin is a being that it looks at you and says, I, this one today, he looks very hot, I cannot even try. Do you know that sometimes you can equip yourself spiritually in prayer and fasting and until demons will just advise themselves, uh, this person that we are talking about, not today. Today we cannot do anything. The kind of fire we are feeling, the kind of energy we are feeling, we cannot touch that lady. We cannot touch that lady. But if they notice you don't have that power, they'll come, everything will come against you. Even some, some of us are facing rejection and we're not supposed to face rejection. Some, some of the rejection you're facing is not God's will. Some people are supposed to accept you, but they're, why? Because you don't have what it takes. Favor is, has escaped. There's a level that prayer and fasting can bring favor upon you. But you don't have that power. Favor power. There's a level of power or energy that comes because of purity, because of holiness, because of being set apart, because of desiring to do righteousness, wanting to do the right thing. There is a power that can only come from that source. You are pure in heart. You're living a consecrated life. It generates virtues. Uh, what, what, when, I, when I say virtue, virtue is a very important quality of substance that is generated by a Christian who works in holiness and, holiness and righteousness. If you go to a room, the room is filled with goodness. It's filled with peace. When that person comes into your house, during that moment they are around, you begin to receive good phone calls, positive news. If they happen to stay in your house for a week, that week will be, will be a blessing. Your household is blessed because the, you are hosting a man or woman that carries virtue. They carry goodness in them. It's a power. Most of us, we don't have virtue. Even your presence alone cannot even bless anybody. You see, the way God has designed it. Just look at what he was telling the disciples. He was telling the disciples, if you go to any city and you found a worthy man, leave peace in that house. If you go to that house and found worthy men, leave, so which means this man, men carried substance, they carried peace. Peace is a substance in the spirit. When they come to your house and then they, they, they declare, peace be with you. From that day, everybody in the house will begin to experience peace. The husband peace, the wife peace, the children peace. So if, if a marriage has been facing challenges from that day, that divorce, nobody will discuss about it. Your children will no longer be unruly. Why? You hosted a man with virtue. You hosted a woman with virtue. And they were able to release some of it in your house. Christians of these days, instead of having the peace, they, they don't have even, in fact, they don't have the peace itself. Yet when Christ was ascending, he told them, peace I leave unto you, not a peace that the world gives. Peace that surpasses understanding. We don't have even the peace. An average Christian is worried, is fearful. He doesn't know what tomorrow holds. An average Christian is crying like the world. And the Bible has told us we should not cry like them. We should not call trouble what they call trouble. Yeah. You're supposed to speak different because you have lost your strength. Yes, I understand. There are people who can gather strength, but sometimes you lose it. You can pray for a week. You can do some amazing things and then you gather strength. And then after some two weeks, it's gone. So, maybe to repeat myself, strength comes from your worship services. There are so many worship services. I think I've been teaching a lot about this thing. I think that should be part of my calling. I keep on repeating myself. Worship, worship service of prayer, fasting, worship service of giving sacrificially the way God has demanded of you, purity and holy living, um, going to do charity, yeah. 
singing songs of praise, worshiping God in song and celebrate dancing before God. All those comprise the worship. Now you should understand that every season of your life, heaven will demand a specific worship and you need to submit according to requirement. Don't worship God in your own terms. I repeat myself, don't worship God in your own terms. Don't give God substandard worship. Don't decide what you want to give to God. Let Him tell you. Let Him inspire you. Quality, not quantity. Quality. That's, the, that's, why we, we, that's, that's where we lack strength as believers. We compromise on worship. That's why we are, we are powerless church. When the devil comes to weep at church, he just whips everybody clean. But if you go to the other world, I'm told... I, I don't know so much about them because I was raised in a Christian home. I don't, I've never gone the other side to try to consult. But I hear, I hear that the other world, they tell you the sacrifices they want. You want your mother, you want your grandmother, you want your child, you want, you, you want your wife, you want your, your husband. They are very specific. And their worship graduates from level to level. They start by demanding the blood of animals, of bulls, and then after some time they tell you, now we don't want blood of animals, we are tired. We want the blood of a human being. Why are they so specific in the other realm? And you think when you come to God, just a matter of shouting and saying, bless God, bless God, clapping hands. It can be. It can be that in the devil's side they are more accurate, they are more specific in their worship more than the kingdom of God. It can be. When it comes to the kingdom of God, we are superior. We are ten times better than the other kingdom. The Spirit of God can, should tell you exactly how you need to conduct your life, to conduct your worship. He must dictate what he wants. Now, we lose strength because we don't know how to worship God according to his terms. We don't want to worship God according to his terms. We want to do it our own way. Exodus 15 verse 2 The Lord is my strength and my soul and he has become my salvation. This is my God and I'll praise him my father's, my father's God and I'll ex exalt him. Look at this scripture. The Lord is my strength. So God is your strength and God is your song. He has become my salvation. So for you to access that strength in God, you need to learn to worship. If you're not a worshiper, then I'm, I don't know how you'll do it. This is my God and I'll praise him. My Father. So you see this praise being lifted towards God. Anything you do on an altar is called praise. You're lifting up God, either by giving, by fasting, by prayer. All those things are mentioned. They rise to God as incense. All of them are praise. So we have failed when it comes to worship and I pray that somebody today will begin to get and understand that God has a demand upon their lives. Some of you God is calling you unto purity. Stop sleeping around with men. That's why you're failing. Stop hanging around with unbelievers. Stop being prayerless. That's why things are not happening the way they should. I told you that when I was starting, I said, your blessing is there. Do you know that you're not an accident? God knew about you before the foundation of the world. That's what the Bible says. And there was a blessing that you came with. Everybody that comes on earth, there's a blessing that you come with. Where you'll stay, the person you'll marry, the kind of wealth you need to command, you come with everything you need in your spirit. But for you to live out that life, you need strength. You need the power of God. The person who gave you the blessing needs to give you the strength. But strength is harnessed. You procure it spiritually. You get it through this means. So that you can be empowered to walk in your own blessing. So I can say this. We are blessed with the heavenly blessings. But you don't have the power or the strength to walk in it. We don't have wisdom to walk in because wisdom is a strength. Do you know the Bible says that 
wisdom is a strength. So some of us, we don't have the wisdom to walk in the blessing. I believe some people have died without walking their blessing. They are are supposed to be great men and women on earth. Great dreams have been jeopardized because nobody wanted to sacrifice. And the most hardest question is when Jesus will be asking you and telling you, I created you to be the a Christian billionaire, a man of God, a pastor, but you did not even live 10% of what I called you to do. That will be the most painful conversation. When Jesus is telling you, this is the picture that I had concerning you from heaven. But when you went on earth, you just did 0.1% of everything that I had for you. People will feel bad. These are the things that Christians will be, uh, will be answering during the judgment seat of Christ. Remember, there are two judgments. We have the judgment seat of Christ and then we have the, the other one. Whereby God himself will be judging the sinners. The white throne judgment. That one, uh, believers should not be there. But the judgment seat of Christ will be rewarding people according to what they did on the earth. And then you discover you are supposed to be somebody very great on the earth. But you, you, you did not bother even to pray. Some of us, prayer will disqualify us. You are prayerless. You are not fasting. You will discover that you are not giving the way God told you to give. You discover that you are not pure the way the Bible said. And you could not get the strength to do the things of the Spirit. There are some anointings. There are some special anointings. You cannot walk in those anointings unless you are sexually pure. There are so many anointings. Every anointing comes with the restrictions. Every anointing has its own conditions. There are some anointings. People who carry them, there are very few. And those people must walk in sexual purity. Immediately they mess up, it goes. They can remain to be believers, they can, they can be forgiven for the sin, but you cannot not walk in that auction again. It's, it's done. So in case you, you, you needed to walk in that kind of anointing and you have already messed up, you'll never walk in it unless God just looks at you with mercy. Yeah, so ask yourself, for me to get the strength that I need in life, what should I submit to God? Is it my body? Is it my mind? Yeah. Now, you must gather strength to walk in your own blessing. That's, I think I need to repeat that. The other thing, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord. And in the strength of his might. Now, he's giving them a final instruction. Finally, be strong in the Lord. You see, emphasis. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Which means there's no compromise. When it comes to the strength of God, no believer should compromise. Nobody should even think twice. Be strong in the Lord and in his strength of his might. So you are supposed to be strong. When a witch is trying to fly by a house, he cannot manage. When you begin to pray, your prayer affects your entire estate. That's the caliber of Christians. If you come to a place, the blessing of God covers the entire place. No wickedness can happen there. The influence of a believer should be felt. Some of us are struggling to tell people, do you know that I'm a believer? Do you know that I'm a believer? You're trying to tell people uh, from your mouth that you're a believer, but everything else is saying you're not. There's no evidence of power. Paul was preaching to this church and telling them, the, the church of Corinthians, our preaching was not in human wisdom. It was not in philosophy. It was not empty words. It came in power. So I presented to you a gospel full of power and demonstration of power. But most believers cannot demonstrate anything. Remember when Moses demonstrated power to the magicians, he was able to turn the snake, uh, the, the, the pole into uh, the road into a snake. How many of you can demonstrate some, even the smallest thing, to any other person to believe? No, very few. You try to, to preach the gospel, people despise you, people start to say, ah, you're lying, and then you decide to demonstrate some. That's just a small. Even a prophetic revelation is, is power, yeah. I remember my mentor was telling me that um, 
he was trying to reach out to this Muslim man. He was trying to tell the Muslim about Jesus, the things of Jesus. This Muslim said, no, 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 I'm not interested in you, Jesus. And then this my mentor discovered that this guy, I need to de demonstrate some power. So he told the Muslim man, uh, when I look into your life, you have tried to commit suicide three times. The first day, this is what happened. The second day, and the second time, this is what happened. Immediately, he said that that man started to cry and sob. I was asking this man, uh, my mentor, how did you know? How did you know? So the heart softened because my mentor demonstrated power. So sometimes we need to demonstrate power as believers wherever we are so that at least somebody, uh, somebody can start to, uh, to know indeed there is Jesus. But if you continue being powerless, then even our witnessing shall, shall be challenging. So how do you lose power? Some of you try. Some people try. They pray. And some people, they do what I'm, I've just spoken about. But we have wrong friends. You are friends with the witches. You are, you are, you are friends with, with uh, very bad people. So if you keep wrong company, they're able to bust your strength. They're able to serve your strength. I, I, there's a time I was watching on TikTok. I saw a witch. You know, in other nations, witches, they are they come openly, they don't hide so I saw this evangelist preaching then a witch came and wanted to hug this evangelist the evangelist said no do you know what the witch said the witch said there is a very good energy around you so the witch wanted to collect the energy of this evangelist through hug so the witches know that if I hug that person, I'll take what they have. And the evangelist, a young evangelist, I don't know, I think that man he has gone. He did not hug that witch. Because the witch said, you have a very good vibe. You have a very good energy all around you. And so some of you have, have hugged away your strength. You are hugging people that you don't know. You are hugging priests and priest, demonic priests. You're giving people a hug. You don't know that you are transmitting something away from you. After you have prayed and fasted, you go and hug the wrong person and then your power goes. So we lose friends, sorry, we lose power because of hanging around wrong friends. So one way you can lose strength is by being around the wrong people. It escapes. If you puncture a tire, if you puncture a balloon, what will happen? The air will escape. So begin about to worship to win battles of life. So today I want to talk to somebody right now. I want to pray for somebody right now. You're listening to me right now, and maybe you don't understand. You, you, you've been walking outside. Worship. I want to pray for you right now that God will begin to speak to you. God will begin to activate your worship in the name of Jesus. Some people are about to receive power. I just want you to pray for some few minutes. Just pray in your language, in tongues, in English, and say, God, I desire the strength. I desire to move in strength. I want you to pray in tongues. Kala masoba grandes. Lebala masunda kabranda. I want you to pray and tell God. I want power. I want strength. I want might. I've been a weak Christian. I've been a weakling. That's why things are not coming to me. Father, give us strength tonight. La banda la makasata. La banda la masunda kabrando lobush. Give me power. Give me power. Give me. Begin to pray. Lebranda kazunda. Lebranda baraba shondo bonobus. Kada zundo do do dosh, kodo bo shele bele bele ba grando masata. Laba 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 labo. Father, release your power upon you. By the mercy of God, I'm releasing power to somebody that's weak in the spirit. I'm seeing fire coming to people's chest. I'm seeing an, an, an anointing coming upon people for them to be strengthened in the spirit of might. I can see it. I see power of God engulfing people. I see people acquiring energies and powers to do things they could not do before. Prayer. The desire to know the things of God. I release that power to you right now in the name of Jesus. I see people deciding to live a holy life, consecrated life right now. It's a power. For you to live uh, for God is a power. Yeah. Some people have received strength to be accountable to God. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, I just hear the Lord telling me we need to be very keen about spirituality. You know, in the kingdom of God, we have the religious part and we have the spirituality. People are very keen. Uh, people are very keen about the religious part. I went to church. I clapped hands. I wrote notes. We met. And, and you, you were able to tell us exactly what you did. But the spirituality side, the spirituality side, most people don't know. They don't know it. May God open your eyes to understand the spiritual protocols of your God, the demands of your God, to live out according to God in the name of Jesus. I see some people have received a special ability to see the spiritual realm. I see people receiving strength on their hands. Your work is going to flourish. I'm seeing somebody, your work is going to do well. Your work is, you're going to do well at work. Your mind has just opened. Some people will begin to know what they need to do because there is a power being released upon your life. I see some people being lifted up when it comes to their spirituality, the spiritual level. That's what I see right now. In the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. I want to give all of us an opportunity to give. If you're watching us on TikTok, uh, in case you're from other nations, away from a nation, we have the PayPal on the bio. You can visit our bio. There's a PayPal there. Uh, if in case you're in East Africa, you press a number 07200 You can give through that. Yeah, if you're watching on Facebook, our details are there. God bless you. And I know somebody is going to live a life that God has ordained for them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, the next time we meet is on Friday, 9 p.m. East Africa time. So uh, prepare, invite somebody when you come. Uh, so we bless God. Shalom. See you next time. If you're here and you want to receive Jesus, let me know. If you're here and you want to receive Jesus, let me know. I think that's the most important part. If you're here and you want to rededicate your life, you backslid. You used to walk with God, you backslid. You have never walked with God before. You want to start a, a fresh journey. I want somebody to say, I want to surrender my life. I've, I've not been living worthy of Christianity. I've been a fake Christian. I've been having signs of a Christian, but I know, I know and I know very well I've not been doing it the, the right way. I want somebody to say and rededicate their life and say, I want to get born again. come right now, you could come to redeem and, and be able to pray with you and lead you to Christ. And be able to pray for you, receive the Holy Ghost. And if you're here and you're a believer and you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you, you should start desiring to be filled in the Holy Ghost. That's where we get our strength. That's where we get our directions. Uh, we cannot do it unless the Spirit of God should guide you, should give you directions. So if you're here, you're a believer, but you don't speak in tongues, which is a sign of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I want to urge you to be, uh, to desire it, to desire that you may pray in tongues. In the name of Jesus. Shalom, God bless you. See you on Friday, 9 p.m. Stephen.